As we consider this story of Jesus in the wild, it, it's a, a real story that happened in, in the life of Jesus. Jesus was out wandering in, in the wilderness, was, was in the, the desert, a, a desolate place. He, he was there for 40 days and 40 nights. And uh, it's a story that's recorded in Matthew, Mark, and, and Luke. And in all cases, it says that for those 40 days, he had nothing to, to eat. It, uh, you know, he, he still had, uh, had water at that point, he still had fluids, but, but didn't eat anything during, during that time. It was, a, it was a challenging time for, for Jesus as he was in the wilderness. He had just come off a mountaintop experience. Uh, Pastor Justin made reference to him, him just coming off his baptism. And, and at the, his baptism, God the Father declared, you are my son in whom I am well pleased. You know, God the Father called him by name and gave him an, an affirmation and, and, uh, and confirmed his, his calling. And so Jesus was on this mountaintop experience. And then it says... And the Spirit led him into the desert. It doesn't say that, uh, that Satan led him into the desert. It actually says that the, the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. As we consider Jesus' experience in the wilderness, we're going to compare it to times in our own lives when we feel like we are in a wilderness, that we are in a, a desert. You know, our wilderness experience may be, may be times of challenge. It may be times of, of struggle. It, it may be times of, of uncertainty and, and of doubts and, and of questions. Our wilderness experience may be a time of loneliness or, or isolation. Our wilderness experience may be when we feel like the, the walls of life are, are pushing in on us. You know, life is, is kind of coming in, falling in on us on, on all sides. Our wilderness experience may be a, a time when, when we feel like we're facing life's challenges, but there really are, are no good options. Uh, maybe our wilderness experience is just uncertainty of not knowing what's next. We may experience it a wilderness experience in, at any point in, in our life. However, many times a wilderness experience comes following a mountaintop experience. You know, that's what, what happened with Jesus. Jesus had had this mountaintop experience of, of his baptism, you know, a, a time of, of strengthening, a, a hope, an encouragement of, of knowing who he was, and, and immediately following that, he was, was led in to the wilderness. Well, we love mountaintop experiences and we want to stay there, but we also must come down from the mountain. The purpose of our mountaintop experiences is often to help us to have strength and be prepared for the times in, in the wilderness. Jesus was, was, was tested and, and was tested in his calling and uh, and also, Jesus faced temptations. Now, we're going to, to delve into those, those three temptations that, that Jesus faced. We're actually going to deal with that more in, a, more in a couple weeks. But as Jesus was led into the, the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, it was for a time of, of testing. But also what happened at that time of testing is that that he experienced temptations from the evil. You know, often I've heard of the, the concept of, of, of testing and, and temptations, and, and, um, and, and I've always heard it defined that, you know, God will, will test us, but God will never tempt us. You know, temptation is, is uh, drawing us to, to do something that is... is is evil something that is, is uh, not pleasing to, to God? God would, would never tempt us, but, but God tests us, and it's Satan who is the tempter. Now, as I've always thought about temptation and, and testing, 
when I've had struggles in my life or as I've talked with someone else who's going through struggles in, in their life, often try to figure out, okay, now, is this a test? You know, is God trying to help me grow in, in a certain area of my life? Or is this a temptation? You know, am I being uh, attacked by, by the evil one and, and uh, being lured to, to do something that, uh, that is, is not pleasing to God? And, you know, as I've been um, studying this passage from Luke chapter 4, I believe that, um, that I'm beginning to, to consider this idea of testing and temptation a, a little bit differently. I don't know that it's one or the other, but often we experience testing and temptation at the same time. Do you remember the story in the Old Testament of, of Job? You know, it seemed that God was testing Job while at the same time Satan was, was tempting Job. I never thought about it in, in, in this way, but how about the Garden of Eden? When God told Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, was that a test, possibly, of whether they were, were going to be obedient or not? And as God was testing at, at that point, Satan enters in and tempts them, and in the case of Adam and Eve, you know, they, they gave in to, to the temptations and, and, um, and, and turned their back on God and did not, did not listen to, to God at that point. The children of Israel, there are many times in the Old Testament that it talks about God testing them, and also with the children of Israel, it seemed that often they, they failed those, those tests because they were, were disobedient, they didn't trust God, and, and often um, in the midst of their struggles, they would say, oh, well, we just want to go back to Egypt, where we were slaves, life was, was easier there. Or the, the story of Gideon, you know, Gideon, who was to, to take... Uh, God's army, Israel's army, in against the, the Midianites. And, and they, were, um, they were outnumbered. The Midianites had many more forces than, than Gideon had of his army. But what was God's instructions to, to Gideon? It wasn't go out and recruit more soldiers. Actually, he already was undermanned in his army. And, and what did God tell him to do? Send some of them home. You've got too many men. You know, and the issue at that point was God wanted to, to show them that it was not Gideon, it was not the, the strength of his army and, and his men that was going to win the battle, but, but God was going to, to win the battle for him. God can do the impossible. You know, in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says, we know that all things God works for good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Could it be that when the adversary comes in our life that, that God can use that for good in our lives? Even if the adversary, even if others intend that for, for evil or for harm? Hear the distinction between testing and temptation. God allows us to be tested for our good. God allows us to be tested for our good, but Satan tempts us to try and destroy us. The two experiences can look similar. I think often they happen simultaneously. However, the purpose and the outcome is very different. God's testing is intended to, to build us up, while Satan's temptations are intended to tear us down. In the book of, of Genesis, there, there's the story of Joseph, and, and after all that Joseph has been through, and, and he's reunited with, with his brothers, and, and they're, um, they're, they're humbling themselves, they're, they're repentant before him. You know, Joseph said, you, speaking of his brothers, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. The wilderness is not a place that we want to go. The wilderness is the place, 
however, where we mature and grow. It's often the wilderness that, that we discover who we are and whose we are and, and for what purpose we have, have been created. What happens in the wilderness? Because of the wilderness, Jesus came out stronger because of it. In our own lives, we can come out stronger because of the wilderness. But in the wilderness, we can also lose heart. Also in, in the wilderness, you know, we can lose faith. We cannot avoid the, the, the wilderness. The wilderness is going to come. Difficult times are going to come in our life. But how are you going to respond to those difficult times. These challenges can become the, the path to, to greater faith and, and faithfulness, or they can also become a path that, that leads to brokenness and faithlessness. I have a friend from, from seminary that um, Jack was, um, was, was strong in his faith. Was, he was... Um, he was excited about serving the Lord. A after seminary, he uh, began serving two, two churches, and, and um, you know, just God's hand seemed to, to be upon Jack's life. But he, he entered into a, a difficult time. He entered into a, a wilderness in, in his life. Unfortunately, as Jack entered into that wilderness... He didn't respond in, in faithfulness. Actually, as a result of, of the struggles he was going through, um, Jack's marriage ended. It was an issue that, uh, that, that he left the church. It, it's been years since, I, since I've had contact with, with Jack. But yet, as he entered into the desert, he... He didn't respond to, to the tests that were before him in a, in a God-honoring manner, but rather he gave in to the temptations and, and what it brought about in his life was, was brokenness. I have another friend who made some, some poor choices and, and found herself in, in trouble with, with the law. What she had done could have cost her her marriage. She could have ended up being in, in jail for, uh, for, for three to five years. But as she entered into her desert, she was, she was broken before God. She humbled her, herself before God. She, she repented of what was going on, on her, in her life. And, and her marriage is actually stronger now than, than, it, than it's ever been. Oh, she's still dealing with the legal consequences of, of, of what, what she did. But, but because of the desert because of the wilderness that she walked through, because of the choices that she made to, to do the right thing, even when there were times that she may have felt that, that God had, had given up on her. She has become stronger because of it rather than being destroyed by it. Now, I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news today, but you're going to be facing a wilderness. Maybe you're in the wilderness right now. Maybe... The wilderness is going to come in this coming week. Maybe the, the wilderness is going to be weeks or, or months down the line. But how are you going to respond to the wilderness? Is it an issue that uh, as there's that, that test, test of your faith of trusting God, even when you don't know how things are, are going to turn out, is that going to be your response or are you going to throw your hands up in, in the air and say, it's not worth it. I'm just going to, to follow the, the temptations and, and go my own way. When you find yourself in a wilderness, you find yourself in a, in a different spot, in a difficult spot. But when you're in that wilderness, when you're in that difficult spot, look for God. Oh, look for God in, in the midst of, of the chaos. He promises that he will never leave us alone. But sometimes in the midst of the chaos, it's hard to see him. At times in the midst of the chaos, it's hard to, to hear him. He will not force his will and, and his way upon us. 
and he will walk with us. He promises that he will, will be with us. Will you invite him to, to do so? As you walk in your wilderness, are you willing to look for Jesus in that journey? Let us pray. Lord, as we face the wilderness, as we face the dark places, the lonely places in our, in our own lives, may you give us eyes to, to see your presence with us. Lord, may you give us a courage to, to do the right thing, not necessarily the easy thing. Lord, may you help us to respond in a faithful way, not in a way of, of turning our back on you. Lord, may you walk with us in the wilderness in order that we might grow stronger and more dependent upon you. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.